Okay, thank you. You know the Christ is raised. Yes, we see that. Keep the collection. Thank you for the return. Very good. Does that does the light turn on? Yes, we do. Would you like to turn on your would you like to turn on your I like Good evening. Today we celebrate the 33rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our entrance hymn is number 617. We know that Christ is raised. Number 617. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. We come together as the body of Christ to offer this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving on the vigil of the 33rd Sunday of Ordinary Time. We ask the Lord to look kindly upon us, to strengthen us in our faith, that we may walk always in the light of Christ and come at last to the eternal day that whose light never sets. Let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. You bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The readings for this evening's Mass begin on page 84 in your Missalette. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. In those days, I, Daniel, heard this word of the Lord. At that time there shall arise Michael, the great prince, guardian of your people. It shall be a time unsurpassed in distress 
since nations began until that time. At that time, your people shall escape, everyone who is found written in the book. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some shall live forever. Others shall be in everlasting horror and disgrace. But the wise shall shine brightly like the splendor of the firmament. And those who lead the many to justice shall be like the stars forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, every priest stands daily at his ministry, offering frequently those same sacrifices that can never take away sins. But this one offered one sacrifice for sins and took his seat forever at the right hand of God. Now he waits until his enemies are made his footstool. For by one offering, He has made perfect forever those who are being consecrated. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer offering for sin. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, In those days, after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from the sky and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the end of the earth to the end of the sky. Learn a lesson from the fig tree. When its branch becomes tender and sprouts leaves, you know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see these things happening, know that he is near at the gates. Amen, I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But of that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. The Christmas break of 1984, I and three seminarian classmates drove from Rome to Istanbul. Uh, taking the ferry uh, from Brindisi in southeastern Italy across to Igonometsu in, in Greece, and then driving across northern Greece to Istanbul. We wanted to go from old Rome to new Rome to that city on the Bosporus that in ancient days went by the name Byzantium and was no more really than a village. But it became the site of a new construction by the Roman Emperor Constantine who had embraced the Christian faith. And he wanted to build a new capital for the empire, moving it east from Rome to this new city on the Bosporus, the site of Byzantium. And he renamed the place after himself. Constantinople. And it was from its inception to be an entirely Christian city. A foreshadowing, however dimly, of the heavenly Jerusalem. And of course the great structure of that city was built by Constantine's successor Justinian in the 6th century, Hagia 
Sophia, holy wisdom named after our Lord. And the expanse of that dome is the most remarkable architectural achievement I have, I have ever seen. It is truly breathtaking. And as we arrived at what is now called Istanbul, since the city fell to the Turks in 1453, we saw the ancient walls that were built, first built by Constantine and then strengthened in subsequent centuries, the walls that were impregnable that lasted for over a thousand years. What remains of them today is still pretty impressive, but they are a sign of that saying, sick transit gloria mundi, thus passes the glory of this world. When Jesus spoke the words to his disciples that we heard in the gospel, it was after he had come out of the temple in Jerusalem. And as the scripture says, we didn't hear this in the gospel passage, but it, it preceded it. As Jesus was making his way out of the temple area, one of his disciples said to him, look, teacher, what stones and what buildings. For that temple that was rebuilt after the original temple constructed by Saint, well, King Solomon, maybe he's a saint, by the Babylonians. It was rebuilt and then adorned by Herod the Great. It, it was an impressive building, the very center of Jerusalem on Mount Moriah, the Temple Mount. And with it was the place where God was pleased to dwell in a special way, an intimate way with his people, even though God is present to all his creation. And Jesus said to that disciple, do you see these great buildings, the temple? There will be not one stone left upon another that will not be thrown down. Jesus was acting as a prophet. This would have been in the year 33 of the destruction of the temple and indeed of Jerusalem by the Romans in the year 70. And he spoke of that destruction and the time that would precede it as days of tribulation that would be so consequential that even the cosmos, the sun and the moon and the stars would, as it were, feel its effect. And the powers in the heavens would be shaken. That God's holy temple should be destroyed. leaving just a outer wall of its courtyard standing, the western wall. Amen, Jesus said, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. But then the Lord says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not 
pass away. We are rapidly coming to the end of the liturgical year. It seems like we just started it. Time goes by so quickly. But time in this world means change, whether that change is welcome or not. It is inevitable. But whether that change ends finally in what the prophet Daniel says is in people arising from death, To live with God forever or those rising from death to be an everlasting horror and disgrace. The changes that we, we cannot control that come inevitably, yet the Word of God endures and by our adherence to that word, through the obedience of faith, through the bending of our will and of our intellect to Jesus Christ, to his person and to what he has taught, then the changes that we cannot control, yet they can become for us the means by which we attain to eternal life, to an unchanging peace and joy and happiness that no earthly change can take from us. In a contrary way, Jesus says that these changes and the way we deal with them can also lead us to further disintegration, loss, and finally to despair and everlasting horror and disgrace. Heaven and earth will pass away. The great walls of Constantinople that lasted for a thousand years, came down. The beautiful temple in Jerusalem was destroyed by the Romans, not to be rebuilt. And so much of our life, which is passing, changes, we lose it. But Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. His words bring life. His person is life itself. So that you and I can weather the changes and do more than just weather them. The changes, again, whether welcome or unwelcome, become for us the beginning of a new creation that God's grace makes possible for us through the obedience of faith, through the surrendering of our life into the hands of Jesus, who by one offering has made perfect forever those who are being consecrated. The offering of his life, of his human life, on the cross that now is offered to us in the Eucharist. The Mass, which doesn't change. Some of its outward elements change over time. But the essence of the Mass never changes. The one all-sufficient sacrifice of Christ 
that forgives sins and overcomes the power of evil and darkness so that light may dwell in our hearts, in that building made of living stones that will endure forever. The wise shall shine brightly, the prophet Daniel says, like the splendor of the firmament, and those who lead the many to justice, that justice which is rooted in God, shall be like the stars forever. The year has gone by so quickly, which portends that the year that we will begin in a couple of weeks will go by probably even more quickly. It is ironic for as we grow older and move a little bit more slowly and are not quite as flexible, at least in our body as we were when we were young, yet this passing of time so quickly requires that we develop a, an internal youthfulness that is indeed very flexible to respond always to the opportunities for grace that change always gives us. Even the difficult trials and seeming defeats of life are really just opportunities for us to exercise that faith and trust in Jesus that brings us to a new life in Him. A poll was has conducted recently by a group of Catholic journalists canvassing attitudes of Americans toward religion, towards God, focused particularly on Catholics, their attitudes, both the practicing and those who don't practice too much. And what we have all observed is how the institutional church the externals of the church in this country have gotten smaller and smaller and smaller. It's a lean time, not a fat time. Although I think in 1965 we, a Catholic would have looked around at the American church and said, these are the fattest times indeed. So many vocations to religious life, so many vocations to the priesthood. So many Catholics attending Sunday Eucharist, upwards of 80%. And now, 55 years later, if I got my math right, what a different scene. Those once firm walls of Constantinople are now the tumbled walls of Istanbul. But heaven and earth may pass away, but Jesus' words do not pass away. Therefore the gates of hell will not prevail against that church which is made of living stones that believes in Jesus and hearkens to him and is not afraid of change. If only that change presents to us further opportunities to show how much we trust Jesus. Will the church continue to contract until it becomes two or three people getting together? Rather than hundreds or thousands, Jesus said, where two or three are gathered, I'm there because they're my church. And will this end quickly? Will this world finally and definitively pass away? 
Jesus says, that day or hour, no one knows. Neither the angels in heaven, nor the, nor the Son, but only the Father. Jesus does not reveal it to us. But what he does reveal is that his love for us, his truth, his goodness and beauty shall never pass away. And how blessed that you and I share in that through our faith and our love for Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. profess the Catholic faith that our forebears have passed on to us. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come, amen. The Lord will show us the path to life and the fullness of joys in his presence, trusting in our Heavenly Father's unfailing care. We now offer him our needs and those of the whole world. Our response is, grant our prayer, O Lord. For Pope Francis and Archbishop Gregory, that through their charism of leadership, we may continue to grow in faithfulness and holiness, we pray to the Lord. Grant our, our prayer, prayer, O Lord. That through openness to God's grace, those in positions of political power may pursue peace, justice, and the true good of the human person. We pray to the Lord. Grant, Grant our, our prayer, prayer, O Lord. For those who have grown weak in faith, that they will receive the grace to awaken to Christ's call and return to the sacraments with all their fellow believers. We pray to the Lord. Grant, Grant our, our prayer, prayer, O Lord. Lord. For the grace to be attentive to the Lord and ready for the day of judgment, we pray to the Lord. Grant, Grant our, our prayer, prayer, O Lord. Lord. For the prayer intentions of those we serve through our food pantry, for the poor and for all who are at, have asked for our prayers, we pray to the Lord. Grant, Grant our, our prayer, prayer, O Lord. Lord. For those preparing to receive the sacraments, for faithful marriages, and for an abundance of religious vocations, we pray to the Lord. Grant our, our prayer, prayer, O Lord. For the elderly, the terminally ill, those suffering from mental illness and addiction, and all who are sick, that the Lord will help them bear their illness in union with Jesus' obedient suffering. We pray to the Lord. Grant, Grant our, our prayer, prayer, O Lord. And for all our beloved dead, especially Francis Mara and Ron Dean, that as we remember them in a special way during this month of November, the Lord may bring them to the joy of eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Grant our, our prayer, prayer, O Lord. Lord. And for those special prayers which we bring before the Lord this evening. We pray to the Lord. Grant, Grant our, our prayer, prayer, O Lord. Lord. Loving Father, show us the path to life and give us the courage 
to follow you to the fullness of joys in your presence. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And our second collection this evening is for the Archdiocesan Priests Retirement Fund. Uh, if you would like to use uh, an envelope uh, to put your check in or a cash offering, you'll see those envelopes at the ends of your pews. Thank you for your generosity as always. Grace, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, O Lord, we pray that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Our Mass is being offered for the repose of the souls of those names that are written lovingly upon the envelopes on our altar. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering, canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim you and drink this blood. We proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we, and as we look forward, to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Hugh of Grenoble, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Wilton, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gathered for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the face of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. body of Christ. The 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 body of Christ. Body of Christ. The 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 body of Christ.
Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth and charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. We're gathered as it gets so dark earlier, but the light of Christ shines quite brightly in this church and in our hearts. Next weekend, we conclude the liturgical year with the solemnity of Christ the King. There will be a brief Eucharistic procession and benediction at the conclusion of the 11 a.m. Mass. At all the entrances of the church, there are two Advent resources available for you to take home. Five minutes with the word, Advent, 2021 daily meditations, and an examination of conscience for adults and teens to help you to make your confession before Christmas. The season of Advent begins Sunday, November the 28th. Please see the e-bulletin for information about this year's Angel Tree Initiative. The tree is already set up. It doesn't have its ornaments on yet, but uh, it gives us an indication that Advent is soon upon us. And now let's pray together our prayer to St. Joseph. Hail, guardian of the Redeemer, spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to you God entrusted his only Son. In you Mary placed her trust, with you Christ became man. Blessed Joseph, to us too, show yourself a father and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage, and defend us from every evil. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Yeah.